Vocational education is education that prepares people to work as a technician or to take up employment in a skilled craft or trade as a tradesperson. Vocational education can also be seen as that type of education given to an individual to prepare that individual to be gainfully employed or self-employed with requisite skill. Non-formal learning includes various structured learning situations which do not either have the level of curriculum, syllabus, accreditation and certification associated with formal learning, but have more structure than that associated with informal learning, which typically take place naturally and spontaneously as part of other activities. Informal education is a general term for education that can occur outside of a structured curriculum. Informal education encompasses student interests within a curriculum in a regular classroom but is not limited to that setting. It works through conversation and the exploration and enlargement of experience. However, in recent years, online vocational education has grown in popularity, making learning various trade skills and soft skills from established professionals easier than ever for students, even those who may live far away from a traditional vocational school.
Examples of non-formal learning include swimming sessions for toddlers, community-based sports programs, and programs developed by different organizations. The learner's objectives may be to increase skills and knowledge, as well as to experience the emotional rewards associated with increased love for a subject or increased passion for learning. Sometimes there is a clear objective link to some broader plan, but not always. The goal is to provide learners with the tools they need to eventually reach more complex material. It can refer to various forms of alternative education, such as unschooling or homeschooling and youth work. From the late 1980s onwards a number of governments began to emphasize on the role of education in preparing learners effectively for the world of work. This school of thought, termed new vocationalism, placed the skills needs of industry at the center of discussions on the purpose of public education. The debate over the relative value of formal and informal learning has existed for a number of years. Traditionally formal learning takes place in a school or university and has a greater value placed upon it than informal learning, such as learning within the workplace.
Informal education consists of accidental and purposeful ways of collaborating on new information. It can be discussion-based and focuses on bridging the gaps between traditional classroom settings and life outside of the classroom. Argentina was one of the first countries in Latin America to run apprenticeship and vocational programs. From 1903 to 1909 basic programs were delivered at main cities. The entity charged with delivering these programs was the General Workers' Union and Argentine National Labor Confederation. This has been in conjunction with the European Union which has also developed policies for lifelong learning which focus strongly on the need to identify, assess and certify non-formal and informal learning, particularly in the workplace. People interpret information differently, and therefore a structured curriculum may not allow all learners to understand the information. Informal education is less controlled than the average classroom setting, which is why informal education can be so powerful.
These programs were created and supported by the federal government and delivered by provincial governments at various technical colleges and regional universities as well as industrial centers. They were meant to deal with a lack of technical specialists in Argentina at a time of rapid industrialization expansion across the country. Learning resulting from daily life activities related to work, family or leisure. It is not structured in terms of learning objectives, learning time or learning support and typically does not lead to certification. Informal learning may be intentional but, in most cases, it is not intentional. Informal education can help individuals learn to react to and control different situations and settings. In addition, it combines social entities that are important for learning. Informal education may be viewed as the learning that comes as a part of being involved in youth and community organizations. Education and training are the responsibility of member states, but the single European labor market makes some cooperation on education imperative, including on vocational education and training. 
A process was launched in 2002 in order to help make vocational education and training better and more attractive to learners throughout Europe. Science has no single origin. Rather, scientific methods emerged gradually over the course of thousands of years, taking different forms around the world, and few details are known about the very earliest developments. Some of the earliest evidence for scientific reasoning is tens of thousands of years old. The biological basis of the study of physiology, integration refers to the overlap of many functions of the systems of the human body, as well as its accompanied form. It is achieved through communication that occurs in a variety of ways, both electrical and chemical. Physical education can also help improve academic achievement. Researchers in 2007 found a profound gain in English art standardized test scores among students who had 56 hours of physical education in a year, compared to those who had 28 hours of physical education a year.
Neuropsychologists conduct psychological assessments to determine how an individual's behavior and cognition are related to the brain. The biopsychosocial model is a cross-disciplinary, holistic model that concerns the ways in which interrelationships of biological, psychological, and socio-environmental factors affect health and behavior. Changes in physiology can impact the mental functions of individuals. Examples of this would be the effects of certain medications or toxic levels of substances. Change in behavior as a result of these substances is often used to assess the health of individuals. Many physical education classes utilize technology to assist their pupils in effective exercise. One of the most affordable and popular tools is a simple video recorder. With this, students record themselves, and, upon playback, can see mistakes they are making in activities like throwing or swinging. Evolutionary psychology approaches thought and behavior from a modern evolutionary perspective. This perspective suggests that psychological adaptations evolved to solve recurrent problems in human ancestral environments. 
Evolutionary psychologists attempt to find out how human psychological traits are evolved adaptations. Much of the foundation of knowledge in human physiology was provided by animal experimentation. Due to the frequent connection between form and function, physiology and anatomy are intrinsically linked and are studied in tandem as part of a medical curriculum. There is wide, though not universal, agreement among philosophers that knowledge can be characterized as a cognitive success or an epistemic contact with reality and that propositional knowledge is a form of true belief. Most definitions of knowledge in analytic philosophy aim to determine the essential features of propositional knowledge, which is also referred to as knowledge.